When I was 12 years old, I fell in love with the game of basketball and dreamed of one day playing in the NBA, just like my all-time favorite athlete, Michael Jordan. I worked hard on my skills, sometimes walking miles across town to find where the best games were, often playing well on into the night if permitted. And I would watch it religiously, tuning into every game I could find on TV but around the same time that I fell in love with the game and dreamed of flying high in the pros, I discovered that I had been born with an incurable condition. A condition that would not only be a major obstacle to the fulfillment of my NBA dream, but also a condition I would have to deal with for the rest of my life. I was born to be short. Little things like that, for lack of a better expression. Or things like when you go to the supermarket, you know, shopping just like everybody else, sometimes you may have an item that you want, it's on the top shelf, and somebody's pushed it all the way back to the wall, and in order for you to get it, you have to literally climb onto the shelves just to reach something. And oftentimes you do that, you're making sure that nobody's around to see things like that, but. Those are the types of things that you have to live with when you're uh, vertically challenged, I say. Both of my parents were short, so I was pretty much destined to be short. My mother was about 5'2 or 5'3. My father is, well, he was 5'5, five, five, but uh, I bought visiting him recently. He's a, a little shorter than me now, so the chances are he's, he's, he's shrunk a little bit which means that more than likely, as I get older, I'll shrink as well. So I got that to look forward to. When I was in high school, because I wanted to be taller so much, I found a way to cheat it. I used to buy Nikes. A lot of times when you buy them, they'd have the, uh, the inner soles. And if you dig around hard enough, you can take that sole out intact. And what I used to do, whenever I'd get a pair of shoes, was I'd start getting those soles and stacking them, stacking them, and I'd have a big stack of the inner soles inside of my shoe and that stack will be about that thick so it would give me a, 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 at least another inch on my height so I used to roll around with that with you know a little more height because I had these soles in my shoes all that ended when this kid broke into my gym locker in high school and stole all my shoes so he stole all those soles along with it so that ended my height <laughs> The thing about being short is there's nothing you can do about it. See, it's different from, like, say a woman has short hair. You know, you can get a weave, you know, and, and one way you can even, you can even make people think that your hair is growing with the weave. Because all you can do is, is as you get one, you maybe you just get like a little inch more on your weave every month. And then people eventually will start thinking that your hair is actually growing. But when you get to be an adult, people know that you don't have growth spurts past a certain age. So it's not like I can start, you know, putting lifts in and, you know, guys are looking at me like, hey, man, you, you starting to look a little taller. I can't be like, you know, well, you know, I've been drinking a lot of milk and stuff like that. So, you know, that's been helping aid my height. man. You know, it doesn't work that way. As much as I hated it growing up, I come to embrace it now because it's part of my character. Like, you know, being short is just part of me. It's, it's who I am. You know, it's part of my identity and I can't change it. And it's funny because I despised it so much growing up, but now I don't, I wouldn't change it because it's such a part of who I am. Fortunately, there's no height requirement for salvation. All that takes is faith in Jesus. So I have that going for me, which is nice.